discretion is advised. Viewer 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 discretion is advised. Folks, welcome to today's edition of PNN Radio. This is uh, Brandon Gallops. I'll be hosting today. And uh, with me today, I have a very special guest. Uh, his name is David uh, Pickup. Uh, David is a licensed uh, marriage and family therapist in two states, uh, Texas and California, and uh, has private practices in both of those states. And David specializes in what is called authentic reparative therapy. And uh, that uh, particular type of therapy can be somewhat controversial, and uh, we'll get into some of those aspects here in a in a few minutes, but uh, David, thank you so much for being with us today and giving us some time. No, thank you. Absolutely. David, if you don't mind, before we get started here, just let folks know a little bit more about yourself and where they can find you, uh, find out more about your practice and more about what you do. Definitely, thank you. It's um, probably the, I've got a couple of names for my website, so probably the easiest one to remember is reparativetherapycenter.com. That's reparativetherapycenter.com. Great, great, and uh, and we'll we'll be sure and give that information out a couple of more times as we move along here today. But well, David, let's just jump right into this because I have uh, uh, since being introduced to you, I, I've read read about you. I've been on your website and and uh, done some studying on you and and what you do. And uh, first of all, I would just like to say thank you for the stands that you take uh, in your practice. And uh, being unashamedly uh, uh, Christian, and uh, when we approach this subject of uh, particularly the things that you deal with and being with men that have uh, feelings of homosexuality or maybe are participating in the homosexual lifestyle or have these issues of what's the headlines of today uh, with the transsexual uh, issues that are going on. And uh, that is what you deal in in your uh, practice of authentic reparative uh, therapy. And so if you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about how that works and, uh, and, and how you approach that in dealing with men that are struggling with these issues. Yes, the um, subject, you're right, is controversial. But you know what? It doesn't have to be that complicated or that controversial because authentic reparative therapy, not the junk that you hear all over the uh, Internet and mainstream media, is about... Uh, First and foremost, about the fundamental belief of at least still most Americans that homosexuality is not something that's naturally inborn. In other words, there is no gay gene. Even the most liberal uh, secular psychological institutions all agree and publish that there is no gay gene. Uh, they also go on to say that uh, there needs to be more research, which I actually agree with, and, uh, and that homosexual feelings probably are caused by some form of genetic influence and emotional environment influence. So to, to hear that, uh, your listeners may be confused because the whole world is based on basing their beliefs about homosexuality, for those that are uh, acceptance of, uh, of the gay lifestyle, uh, as something that is naturally inborn. But it's just not true, and more specifically for my clients, and I have two practices, by the way, one in L.A. and one in Dallas, Texas, and 98% of my clients are all men who are dealing with unwanted same-sex attraction. And for these men, the most important point is, besides their faith, is that their homosexual feelings were caused by very deep-rooted, in childhood, a sense of gender identity inferiority. Sometimes that, that represents... Basically, they just don't get their male needs met, and so they begin to feel very shamed and inferior as male. And sexuality comes out of one's gender automatically. So these guys grow up with all, without all these needs fulfilled, and these needs, because they're so desperate for love and affection and affirmation, they easily get sexualized in puberty. And for some, um, for some clients, although not all, they are sexually abused when they're small children by same-sex pedophiles. And so one of the reasons those feelings come up, obviously, during puberty is, is that. So reparative therapy, what it does, why it's so unique, is because it goes below, through emotional processes, it goes below the homosexual feelings where we find all this trauma and unfulfilled needs. Long story short, of course, but nevertheless, it resolved those needs. It 
resolves uh, those issues of shame, removes all the shame for having homosexual feelings or about oneself as a, as a guy, uh, a guy's self-esteem grows and uh, issues really begin to resolve themselves and needs get met. And then what happens is, and I've seen this every week in my office, as well as in individual lives, these guys' homosexual feelings begin to lessen and dissipate. And not many people know about that because the, the mainstream media has been keeping this information for at least the last 20 years away from the general public. And also it doesn't get out to many churches. And so that's one reason why I'm so glad to be on the show today because it, 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 people got to know. So thank you for having me on. Oh, yeah, no, no problem, man. And listen, I want to back up just a second to something that you said that I find very interesting because I have theorized this for a long time, and 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 several others that that uh, work with us here at PNN have have had these same thoughts and theories, and we've been very vocal about them and taken some heat. And that is what you said that in I think the number you used was in ninety eight percent. You would you would speculate of the cases that you deal with that these feelings go to an underlying issue that happened sometime in early childhood, and we have speculated for a long time that. The perfect recipe, if you will, for a homosexual male is a broken home, uh, the lack of a positive male influence, and the presence of a dominating female influence. And then, of course, you brought up the sexual abuse situation, and that, that can sometimes go along with those other three dynamics, but can also be independent. So it's interesting to me to hear a professional, which you are, to verify what we have just been saying as lay people, just looking at very obvious things going on in the world and talking with people in this lifestyle. But it's interesting to hear you as a professional basically verify those things. Yeah, Brandon, and what's so great is that that's your, your voices uh, are, are become less and less paid attention to because uh, the world is going this other direction. They, they want so much to believe that homosexuality, or I should say some people, want to know that, want to believe that homosexuality is just a, a normal variant of sexuality. And they go so far, because one can hear this on the internet every day, all day long, they even say more and more people now that it's God-created and God-designed, which is certainly not true from a spirit, spiritual standpoint, but also from a psychological standpoint. So so that's what I, that's what I do. I, I help... Uh, I help those individuals like yourself, uh, not just clients, but I help individuals like yourself, and uh, I'll just call them lay people, uh, who, who need a confirmation uh, of the details of uh, God's design. Uh, I, I personally think that good psychology is always reflective of God's uh, design for human beings. So uh, gender and sexuality can be whole if one really works on the underlying issues. And so I'm glad to confirm what you uh, what you you and your colleagues have, have felt all along. And I can, I can testify to that um, professionally because so many clients report exactly, in their own words, of course, what you always have known it to be. So there it is. Yes, yeah. No, and, and listen, I, I unashamedly come from a biblical worldview, and I know that, that, you, that you do too. And so, you know, I judge everything through the lens of the Bible. And, you know, the scriptures are very clear from Old Testament to New Testament all the way to the words of Jesus himself that we are intended, uh, you know, to, to, to work together as man and woman. Never in scripture do we see where, where we were intended or created to work together in a marriage relationship or in any type of sexual relationship as man and man or woman and woman. It's just not there. So for someone to even speculate that this, is, that this whole phenomenon is God-created, uh, or even that there is something genetically wrong with someone who has these feelings uh, is very unbiblical and has no sound basis in my mind. I mean, God uh, God doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> and, and He doesn't, uh, you know, I don't believe that God intends for us to live our lives confused or, or, uh, or in a state of unhappiness or depression. As, as again, it just in, in my unprofessional uh, opinion. I see so many people that are in this lifestyle that are very unhappy, and, and depression, I know, often goes along with this, and I think there's something very spiritual to that. You're, you're right. You're, you're so very right. But you know what? The, the mainstream stream media never talks about the thousands of ex-gays out there. They never talk about the underbelly 
of uh, homosexual, the homosexual lifestyle. They're always focusing on some famous person who's got a lot of money, who's very uh, famous for how much they love everyone and now love themselves and come out and are now true to themselves. And they never focus on what's really going on. I'm not saying we should badmouth at all or shame or bully or do anything but uh, exhibit love for people who, who are gay. But that doesn't mean we have to believe uh, a, a lie about what sexuality is and, and how it's designed and, and how it needs to be for a, a person's optimum happiness. There are people who have some degree of happiness, I'm, I'm certain, just like there are with uh, other issues of, of the world. And they, But in, in homosexuality, these issues seem to revolve around the lens of happiness with how great your sex life is or how, uh, how uh, dramatically uh, marvelous things are. And, and it always seems to be uh, a, more of a fantasy kind of uh, state of mind. I'm not saying these guys or, or these women are, are crazy and don't deserve respect. They do, but they just, in my experience at least, with all due respect, they just don't understand because they haven't been raised with that security of gender identity that feels so good that's a part of God's design. No, absolutely. And listen, you, you just made a very biblical point, and I'm sure that you know this, but even the scripture tells us that sin is pleasing for a time. So, right. you, you know, I, I don't doubt that there are people that consider themselves to be truly happy, but uh, that, that, that are in this lifestyle. Well, well, David, look, let me just ask you, let me just play, let's play devil's advocate here for a minute. And let me just ask you a, a couple of questions, um, and maybe you can help people understand, uh, you know, what it is that you do and why, and why you do it, and, and is it real? Um, so, so let's just say this, um, you obviously, uh, professing Christian unashamedly, um, so it isn't what you do, this reparative therapy, just, you know, we're just going to pray it away. And, and what do you say to people who maybe have, have been or are participating in, in this lifestyle and say, well, listen, I've tried that, you know, I've, I've sought God, I've, I've, I've tried to pray it away, quote, and, uh, you know, God didn't show up for me. And what, what do you say to someone who has those type of feelings? That's such an important question. When I talk to people about that very thing, and I have uh, for the last several years, because some church members have been distraught over, well, what's true, what's not, and they're confused and don't know what to do. And there have been some institutions, um, one of which is no longer there, which, frankly, I'm, I'm glad, that, that tend to preach that, uh, pray away the gay works. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't. Now, I want to qualify that. I have seen maybe one or two individuals that did say they had such a profoundly, deeply religious spiritual experience that they changed. Okay, that, that's, that's great for them. Uh, that, doesn't have, have, uh, that, that doesn't represent everyone's story, however. More often than not, in other words, just simply praying away the gay tends to get people in trouble because what they're doing is they're not dealing with the underlying emotional issues that haven't been resolved yet according to God's design. So that's what I do, is help, help guys really look uh, underneath the issues for, um, for the resolution of, of these things I'm talking about. And these guys, um, these guys uh, who have not come out of, let's say, the Pray Away the Gay movement, if they've come to reparative therapy, the real thing, <clears throat> uh, reparative therapy just so happens to complement wasn't designed this way, but just happens to complement sound biblical principles. And so for these guys who are people of faith, they, their faith is even strengthened. And these issues, when they go below, past the, past the surface ways to, quote, cure people, which we don't do. I want to stress that. This is not about a cure. This is about change and restoration according to God's design. They come out of my, long story short, they come out of my office feeling great about themselves. They, they put in a lot of tough work. People got to know that this is tough work to face these issues, but it can be done. And guys, tell me how wonderful it feels uh, to feel sometimes for the first time, how great it is. It, well, I call it the joy of manhood. Yeah, and that that's funny because, boy, our society is certainly against manhood these days. There's certainly an agenda there, so... <laughs> Uh, it, it, yeah, no, it's amazing that you can help you can help men and young men discover that. Um, well, let, let me ask you another question. What, what do you say to? And I know people um, that fall into this category. What about the the quote XX gay? In other words, someone who 
has participated in the homosexual lifestyle, um, came out of it, maybe, you know, maybe that was through, a, as we've talked about, a spiritual experience, or maybe they just got tired of it, left it, but then wind up ultimately going back into that lifestyle. Um, it, again, just devil's advocate, isn't that kind of proof that what you do doesn't work? I mean, if people go back to that over a period of time? No, and here's the short answer. These guys never had authentic reparative therapy. I know some of these guys, the, the ones that are most um, vocal in the United States. I know some of these guys. I know of a lot of these guys, and they never had reparative therapy. Reparative therapy is not pray away to get to gay. I can't I can't emphasize that enough. You know, bless them. They they uh, certainly tried their best according to what their leaders told them. But yeah, it didn't work for them. But what they're doing is they're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. And I would invite them to look again at the underlying issues, which, by the way, I've spoken at some of these ex-gay conferences and trying to, and my colleagues as well, well-known uh, people for, for in, in this, um, in this uh, area. And we've tried for years to talk to leaders about how they're not really dealing with the uh, design issues that are and the emotional issues below these, these, and they just never really checked it out, to make a long story short. And so now they've, some of them, not all of them, some of them have completely flipped to the opposite side of the issue. So that's what I would say. Yeah, no, I, and I would agree that, you know, ultimate, ultimate healing can come. And I think another point to be made is that a, a person generally, genuinely has to realize that, that they need some help. And, and, and then they have to, after they realize it, they have to want some help before they can be helped. And that goes with, with any, type of, any type of sin, any type of issue in someone's lives that they may be dealing with. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's exactly right. And it has, it's mirrored in uh, psychology as well, because the same thing is true. Um, several things that may not work may be because of several, several reasons. The therapist may not be trained. We're not perfect. The therapist may not be trained enough and may uh, may not really be an expert enough in these deep issues. And by the way, it does take an ex- take an expert. I assure you, these are these are tough issues to navigate. But also, the client frequently, as every good therapist knows, both wants help and doesn't want help at the same time because issues are tough to deal with and there's a kind of an automatic resistance sometimes well if that resistance overcomes them or they just give up then obviously that's going to be an issue but that's true for all therapies for all therapeutic issues right well one more question uh, one more time of putting you on the spot here with something uh what would you say to people that because you use the term very openly uh, uh psychotherapy that this is what you're dealing in and you know, what, what would you say to people that maybe think that there's a stigma that goes along with that or even just, you know, of any kind of therapy? Well, I'm seeing a therapist or I'm undergoing psychotherapy. That, you know, I mean, let's just be honest. Those type of terms can carry with them a stigma. Um, so, I mean, how, how do you, what, what would your answer be to that? What, what do you, what's your feelings on that? Well, I have a lot to say about that, but, but I'll probably, um, in other words, don't get me started. I'll, I'll <laughs> write it on the air. <laughs> I'll, I'll trim it down, and because there's several important points here. In my opinion, this this suppression of what's really going on, both in Christian fields and in secular fields, secular fields, has led to the rise of homosexuality. I just think it's pretty obvious that when people really don't deal with what's really going on, those things don't go away. They get repressed and suppressed, and they come up another day. And I think that's one reason why the homosexual agenda has roared ahead, because we just, as a society, have chosen, either unconsciously or not, to not deal with what's really going on. My, my heart breaks for some of these guys who walk into my office, knowing, after I take a very extensive client history, that their pain is all about a lack of feeling approved of and loved and these guys have never, if you can imagine this, these guys almost never, to, to, in some cases never, have experienced what it feels like to be affirmed in their masculine identity by a loving father. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not into the blame game here at all. I'm just into naming the truth of what their experience is and how they feel. And for a guy to... A guy will search around for masculinity any way he can get it if he can't get it inside of his own body. And that's essentially the mechanism for homosexuality that we deal with, that are the underlying issues. And people got to know this. So psychotherapy, even through a spiritual lens, 
should be seen as the detailed version of God's wisdom. That's what I believe. Um, and so, so that's what we do in session, especially for people of faith for whom this really, really works. Yeah, and I appreciate you you clarifying that and, and your stance on that. Well, listen, let, let's uh, let's switch gears here for a second. Um, I know that uh, the la- over the last year or so, um, there have been some rulings in some states um, basically outlawing uh, what you do. And uh, I know that I, uh, during that time, remember when New Jersey uh, had that ruling, uh, I happened to be on uh, live radio that Friday and had a chance to address that and, and my fears for that and the slippery slope that I thought that could lead to. So, so what has some of those legal cases uh, done to you and, and your private practice, and, and where do you see that going in the future? Well, the first egregious thing that's happened that I want to talk about for a second is I want, I want your listeners to imagine a situation. Five-year-old boy, sexually abused by a same-sex pedophile adult. Later on in puberty, because of that stimulation, he has homosexual feelings. He's confused. He's, uh, uh, grief comes up. He doesn't know what to do. It's a really tough situation. He walks into a therapist's office in California, New Jersey, or Oregon, and the therapist, by law, has to tell him, I can't help you with your homosexual feelings. Wow. It's illegal for me to do anything, and this is almost a quote directly from each of these laws, to do anything for any reason to lessen or dissipate homosexual feelings. And I've testified personally in two of these three states before the legislature legislature committees that passed these laws. They heard this evidence. They heard personal evidence of marvelous stories of change and they sat there and they voted the law in anyway. Unbelievable. So, <laughs> more confirmation there is definitely agenda an agenda going on here when it comes to this radical homosexual movement that we see sweeping our country. And uh, I think that was confirmed again by the Supreme Court ruling of last Friday. Absolutely. That was one of the most obtuse, at best, ju- judgments I, I, I've ever seen in my entire life, and I think arguably in their history books, there's never been anything so monumental, and in and, and a lot of our opinions, obviously, so monumentally mon, just uh, um, uh, indicative of, of something that's so life altering that's going to lead to destruction of gender and sexuality, and therefore this country, including the family. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree a hundred percent, David. And, and listen, I sent out a text that Friday morning to several friends of mine and colleagues, and the text read, "Write down the date, June twenty sixth, twenty fifteen, the day America died." And uh, I think that's the, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think that's the road that, um, that the path that, uh, that the Supreme Court justices chose for our country on that, uh, on that Friday. So it's very unfortunate. Well, along those lines, with that ruling, where do you see that ruling playing into what you do? And, and uh, I mean, listen, if it's now the law of the land, um, do you see it where it could come a day where it would be illegal for you to counsel with anyone? Uh, that's that's seeking true help with these feelings. Anything could happen, and that's definitely a possibility. That's what's so really scary. In fact, even though I don't think that it's going to happen anytime soon, because there are so many people in the U.S. Congress who have said this is these these laws are never going to pass federally. However, just so your public knows, there are extremely liberal, uh, and they're all Democrats, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, senators that have introduced legislation to do exactly that, to make it illegal for adults to get this kind of therapy, which is an extraordinarily unprecedented violation of free speech, according to the Constitution, uh, violation of client rights. You, you just can't do that to adults, especially when there's no proof of harm, especially uh, as espoused by the American Psychological Association. They've put reports and they've said, uh, there's no proof of harm of sexual orientation change efforts. So there's an agenda going on. No, I, absolutely. I, you know, and, and it, again, it's just refreshing to hear a professional like yourself verify those things. Well, listen, let's hit the <laughs> let's hit the uh, the big one here, if you will, um, because obviously dominating headlines just in the last few weeks has been this whole Bruce Jenner saga, uh, and I refuse to call him by any other name. 
because, let's face the facts, Bruce Jenner's birth certificate says he is a male. His DNA says he is a male. Uh, his his uh, plumbing parts, his anatomy says he is a male. Um, he chooses to, uh, uh, to identify himself as a female. That does, in fact, not make him a female in any sense of the word. So, the transgender issue... Um, Listen, I, I was able to speak to this just in the last couple of weeks. You, you know, John Hopkins University, uh, they, they patented the transgender surgery um, many years ago. And then they stopped doing that surgery because they found out through years of study that just it, how intensely harmful this was to people who were having this done. So where does the transgender movement, this, this, you know, this whole new deal, where does this fall in? Uh, to to uh, to what you do to the to the reparative therapy and just into our world in general. Well, reparative therapy principles, because so much this has to do with gender security, can definitely help someone like uh, who is now Caitlyn Jenner resolve. And this is the this is the official term: their gender dysphoria. That's what's in the diagnostic manual. Not the di- not that the DSM is uh, the Bible at all, but uh, we use it as a uh, supposedly a very good general guide, even though the guide is getting uh, more and more not based on science. However, uh, what really concerns me deeply is that the media takes hold of these stories. Even Jenner takes hold of these stories. And uh, what, in my opinion, with all due respect, exhibit narcissistic unresolved needs and issues that should have been resolved from, from childhood and never did. Uh, it results in a lot of uh, dramatic uh, coming out stories, and uh, there's a lot of uh, magazines and reality shows and money thrown around, and it's all highly, highly dramatic and, in my opinion, fantasy oriented. But what you point out is it doesn't matter how you dress up, it's your anatomy and your biology is part of who you are, whether you like it or not. And what really is so rough. For, for these folks and also the people who are just listening to all this, is that no one ever considers for a moment, as they used to many years ago, that there just might be some emotional or psychological issue going on underneath that's producing this. You don't hear that opinion anymore, except for, you know, conservative people. And so leaving out the evidence on the other side is simply a travesty. No, it, it definitely is. And, and uh, well, David, how... Um how are you viewed among your colleagues uh, in this field, in, in the field of therapy and, and, and psychology? Uh, I know that probably some of the things that you say and uh, some of the stands that you take are not that popular, but um, h- how, are, uh, how are you accepted in that field? Short story, my colleagues and uh, the, the conservative people of whom I'm connected with very much around the country, they, they're... they're uh, very, very supportive, extremely so. And I'm not the only one who does this work. There are very fine clinicians in several areas of the country and in the world who do the, at least the basics of this kind of work. But obviously, there's a whole other group of people out there who, who uh, well, show me hatred, threatened me, uh, tried to, in my opinion, project or displace onto me their unresolved issues and and exhibit hate, hatred, hatred and bigotry, and uh, it, it's fine. I understand. I have a lot of compassion for these folks, but it is quite amazing the the uh, things that are said and, and done. No, it definitely, and and I guess you know the bigger point I was trying to make is that you know let's just face the facts. We haven't seen a David Pickup or anyone else in your field making these kind of statements on Fox News or CNN. <laughs> or anywhere but, else, but, but we certainly see a string of therapists that will come on to these types of venues and, uh, you know, are offered platforms all day to share their opinions of uh, the fact that this is just, people are born this way. There's nothing they can do, and uh, let's just leave it alone. You know, you're almost 100% right, but two years ago, I was on CNN. Well, yeah. hey, how about that? <laughs> and, and anybody can go to my website, reparativetherapycenter.com, look on the resources page, and they'll see the interview on CNN that I did, and they might be quite uh, taken aback by how that interview was handled by CNN. So just just for um, just just have a resource for people. 
No, absolutely. I appreciate you saying that. And and again, David, we're, we're running quickly running out of time. So if you would just kind of sum this up for us again, man. And, and again, tell people where they can uh, where the best place to find you. Uh, and especially if someone who's hearing this may themselves be struggling with this, these issues or may have family members that are struggling with this and, and need some advice or possibly to seek some actual counsel from you. Yes, thank you. The, the, the truth is, is that authentic reparative therapy really works. The truth is, compassion really works. And people can talk with me, consult with me. They can. I, I do tend to speak all over the country for various um, uh, psychological associations, but also uh, ministries or churches. And I can come out and, and speak. So if, if you need me for any reason, whether it's therapy or consultation or speaking engagements, just go to reparativetherapycenter.com, get on the contact page, and it goes directly to me. And I answer, I answer all contacts within the same day. So I'm happy to help. Wow, appreciate that, David. Thank you so much again for for your stand uh, and, and for your confronting these very real, deep uh, spiritual issues uh, from a spiritual, from a biblical standpoint. And uh, we certainly wish you the best uh, in your practice. And again, thank you for your time today. And again, folks, this is uh, we've been speaking today with David Pickup, a licensed marriage and family therapist specializing in authentic, let's stress that, authentic reparative therapy. And David, again, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. I'm so honored. Absolutely. Folks, again, this has been Brandon Gallops on today's edition of PNN Radio.